Hey, my community, Jeff here again for jumping on a uh, one of the tags. I need to do the actual 2024 tag, but uh, it's just, uh, you know, hadn't got a chance. This one I thought would be quick and easy because it's all one album, one band worth of albums to grab. So this is for Joe over at Racer Records doing the 2024 Kiss vinyl tag. So uh, I know I did one of these in 2023, which he mentioned seeing, and so he started one for 2024. So I figured I'd jump on this. Some of these answers would be the same. But anyway, all right, so first up, he wants to see the first and last Kiss record we bought. So you can interpret these two different ways, I guess. I'm going to go with a, a little of each. So the first album in my life that I bought was Kiss Love Gun. I've told the story a hundred times before. bought it in 1978. This is what was my entrance into Kiss. It was my entrance into rock and roll. This is not the actual one I bought because this is one of the 2014 reissues. So then you look at like, if you want to take it literally and say the first album by Kiss I bought that's in my current collection was when I got back into buying records in 2017. Uh, according to Discogs, if I show the first Kiss record that I logged into my Discogs account, which I believe I started before I started buying vinyl, which would assumingly mean that this would be the first vinyl that I bought was Kiss Dynasty. So I guess at some point, once I get back into vinyl buying around 2017, at some point, this must have been the first one I bought. So kind of a technicality there. That's the first one I bought in the new era of buying. But the first album I ever bought in my life was Kiss Love Gun. But I don't have that original one. And then the last one I bought, that was a kind of a toss-up. I'm looking at the timing and, you know, I could say the Creatures of the Night reissue but really, I think Kiss Killers is one because I got this from somebody on uh, Facebook or something. And I think this came in after that, uh, after I bought the Creatures of the Night. This and the Smashes out the best of album, I got that on from somebody. I think that came in around the same time as this. So this would have been the last Kiss album I bought. Now, the, Kiss, uh, the last Kiss related album I bought was this Wicked Lester album which I bought about a month ago two months ago when I was in South Carolina so Kiss related but not really Kiss in general so but that's that's both angles of that whole angle there next he wants to see an album with everything in it and I have none of my original album from back in the day that would have any of that stuff in so I have quite a few that have all the stuff in it but they're all going to be of the reissue type. So, for instance, both of these are the 2020, 2014 reissues. Both have them have reproductions of everything in them. So, don't know if that qualifies for what he's looking for. But, you know, these are complete, as are all the other 2014 ones. Most all the records that I do have are 2014 reissues. And so, therefore, they're going to have all of that stuff in there because I haven't reused any of that. All right, the next question is to give a five-word review of Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. Now, I saw that when it aired on TV in the day. Went to actually my uh, father at the time was dating a lady. We had a black and white TV in our house. He was dating a lady. My parents had been divorced for just a, a couple years prior to that. And he was dating a lady who had a color TV. So they took a date night and took me and my older brother over to her house to watch Kiss Meets Fan in the Park on TV. So I did get to see that back in the day. Now... The other day, I pulled out Kissology, the you know the box sets, and I watched it again because it's been a while. Because I realized that the one on the box set is Kiss. Uh, so there's Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park, and then there's uh, the other one, the other title um, that I'm totally drawing a blank for, which I don't think I ever realized had different songs. The Kiss, uh, whatever it's called, dang it, the one that came out overseas. The songs in that movie were a lot of the solo album songs, whereas I guess the Kiss Meets Phantom of the Park original U.S. version had Kiss more Kiss songs. And so anyway, I watched the one the other day on the Kissology box set, which is the overseas version. And you know, I come. It's been years since I watched it. I've watched it a couple times, probably since it came out, obviously. But uh, it had been a while since I watched it. So I watched it literally like three months ago, two or three months ago. And, um, you know, and, and I guess I would come away and say, you know, it a five word review, kind of cheesy, but still cool. It, you know, it's uh, it's got the cheese factor. It was a 70s. So so made for TV movie. It's about what it is. But as a Kiss fan, it was hugely fun at the time. So anyway, next question is our favorite non makeup album. 
which is tough. I mean, obviously, everybody leans towards Revenge because it's probably one of their heaviest. But for me, Lick It Up still stands strong only because it was such an exciting time at the time. And I listened to this album so much. I probably, over the years, have listened to this album more than Revenge. Only because... I've, I've had it longer, so that's going to make a difference too. But I, I, it's just... There's so many memorable songs on here that I find myself gravitating back to this album a lot more. So I'm going to pick that as one of my favorites. you know. But I, there's a lot of greats on all of them, so it's really kind of tough. Um, next is Most Prized Memorabilia. Okay, so I don't have any pinball machines like Joe has or anything. That'd be nice to have. Uh, I don't have any of the old original stuff. Back in the day, I had the makeup kit. I had all the, the dolls, um, both the kinds that bend in the arms and the kinds that don't bend in the arms. And had all of that kind of stuff. The radios and the tour books and all that. Then, of course, I got out of all that stuff, got rid of all that. So since buying more stuff maybe in the past 10 years or so i have the psycho circus you know the mcfarlane uh image things i've got the 7-eleven big slurpee cups that came from the first reunion i've got the pez containers i mean nowadays the marketing is off the hook and occasionally people would buy me stuff for christmas birthdays or whatever just novelties nothing that i would say is super prized what I prize the most nowadays are things like this. The Seal with the Kiss, the Lydia Chris book. I love the books. This is, you know, I don't have the history books, which I'd love to have. But this is something like that. Heavy duty, super thick, super glossy, just filled with behind the scenes photos and stuff that she took while on the road with the band. Pictures and, and things that you've never seen before. Clippings and everything. So things like this. The other one I would like that I really enjoyed that I was harder to pull out which i showed all of these in my kiss collection i believe a few earlier last year i did all those kiss things and, and i did the books and the kiss compendium which is the giant huge one that's got all of their comic books in it from the beginning all the way up to when that came out there have been some that came out since but it's just a massive high gloss graphic novel of like every kiss comic book for from the 70s through you know, through the 2010s, I guess. So things like this are, are more up my alley than just the, the little, you know, memorabilia pieces and toys and things like that, which I have some of, but they're back in my music room that I don't use much anymore. So they're just kind of back out there collecting dust. So I didn't want to go drag any of that out. So, but I really like the books with the, the really cool history of and pictures and stuff that you've never seen before. So that's going to be there. Uh, show a bootleg. God of Thunder FM broadcast. This came out from that company in England. And this concert, this is mainly just the songs that are, uh, this is like half the show. Most of this concert is on the Kistory box set. And then this is just a single album version. Um, I don't have a ton of bootlegs. There are tons of them out there and they're super expensive. Um, but I have like that and on the Ritz and, and some of those like that that are, uh, and of course the uh, you know Wicked Lesser one I showed a minute ago that's a bootleg too unofficial release so all right next up rank the solo albums so I did a ranking video and I actually went back to see what I said in my ranking video in 2021 Kiss ranking video and at the time I listened to all four albums and I kind of had a mental change on my ranking um, and and really I don't think I've changed much in my view if I'm pushed hard. To rank them and and I have such a weird way of doing it as far as the way I think about it I still rank the ace and the Peter as two of my most listened to albums um, as I made a point in that video this album gets a bad rap for two re I think there's two things that could have solved that issue not really two things but two uh, two ways you can look at it if you look at it for being kiss with Peter Chris the music is not for KISS fans, it's just blah. But if you took the KISS logo off and you took the Peter Chris picture off and you released this as a rhythm and blues type album, it probably would have soared through the charts. Now, we see in recent years, Paul has done the whole, you know, rhythm and blues remakes and stuff like that. <sighs> He's doing the same thing Peter did. And it's a phenomenal album. So if you take it for what it is musically, it's a phenomenal album. If you take it for a KISS album, it's it's blah nobody's gonna like it so you have to separate that if it was released outside of the kiss market without any of the kiss stuff on it 
the world probably would have appreciated it. But if you put the kiss stuff on it, they're not going to buy it. But then on the other hand, if you put the kiss stuff on it, kiss people are not going to like it. So it really gets a lot of bad rap. If you just listen to it for what it is, it's really a beautiful album. It's got a lot of great points. I find myself singing along to that album probably the most. But still, this album has probably got the most air play on my brain over the years than any of them. And so it didn't in the very beginning, but it grew quickly on me. So those two are going to be tops, and these two are hard to do. I really like the Gene one. Most people seem to hate the Gene album. I really like the Gene album. I always thought this was the weaker of the two albums because to me, this just sounds like, you know, Kiss leftovers. Uh, it sounds the most like Kiss. It sounds like, you know, the kind of stuff that you would think Kiss would put out. It just doesn't feel different or solo. I mean, this one feels very different. It's got a lot of great stuff on it. I like it all from start to finish, so it's tough. But when I re-listened to this one a couple years ago, it blew me away in ways that it had not before. So it really ranked up there. So it was really tough to pull these in. Um, I think if I was really pressed to really do it, I'm still going to probably put this one in number three and this one in number four, only because I still feel this one's a little more of an original feel. And these songs, this used to be my favorite back in the day. When it first came out, this was my favorite. Ace later became my favorite. Peter really moved up there. But, you know, Really, it's hard. I think a lot of these are, they're all great for different reasons, but I'm going to rank them like that and put, you know, I'll put Paul at the bottom, but it's, it could, it could switch in five minutes. It depends on how I feel. Really tough decision. I think they're all great. Next, uh, show a picture disc. I have a picture disc, Crazy Nights. I did not buy this for the picture disc version. I did not buy this for, to have it on record. I was not buying vinyl at the time that I bought this. When I converted my shed out back into a music room, I was went online to look for stuff to decorate it with. I started buying posters and records, and I bought picture discs to hang on the wall. This was one that I found for really cheap because it was 2009, so records were on the out. And I got this, and I got some Adam Ant, and I got some Rothschild, and some other bands. Just some stuff on eBay that I could find picture discs of my music from the early days. And I grabbed that. So I have that. I don't, uh, I have one of the solo albums on picture disc, but I'm not a big picture disc collector, so I don't have a ton of those. Next up, a, t a pick ticket stub. I don't have any ticket stubs. I saw the band in uh, 81. I'm sorry, I first saw them in, in 79 for the Dynasty Tour. I saw them in 81. Uh, I did not, I got in trouble with my parents, and so I did not get to see the Creatures Tour. I saw the Lick It Up Tour, and I've seen them a handful of times since then. When I moved back to Virginia in 2002, I saw them in like 2004, and 8, and 12, and 18, and 14. I don't know, I've seen them a half a dozen times, but almost every time I've seen them in the past 20 years, it's been digital tickets. So I don't have any stubs from that, and I definitely don't have any stubs from the 80s and stuff like that from that time. So I don't, so I don't have any t stubs for a KISS show, sadly, but I have lots of memories. So don't have anything to show there. And then he had the, uh, back in the day when Eddie and David Lee Roth were fighting, Eddie approached KISS, or they, when Ace was out, they were talking about maybe having him come on board. So he wants to see our favorite Van Halen album, and picking a favorite Van Halen album would be like trying to pick a favorite child, as they would say. I have a hard time doing that. The first album, obviously, is stellar. This is really, for me, when I first found out and learned about Van Halen was around the women and children first fair warning era. I saw this tour. I believe we saw this tour. For me, this is really the heart of when I really got into them. The first album, obviously, is stellar, but I listened back in the day, I think, to this and women and children first, probably tons and tons and tons. And then I fell in love with Diver Down. Love it, even with the cover tunes. And so that whole time frame, the Diver Down, the Fair Warning, the Women and Children First, are really the core of where I really got into them. First two albums, you know, were there, and the second album was always odd to me, but it over years has grown on me. But the first album, obviously a stellar. But this was one of the ones I still listen to quite a bit. Then he went to see a Peter or Ace post-Kiss album, or both. And I've got both. I've got pretty much everything to do. So here's one with Peter and with Ace on it. So this was the one. He put out a couple solo albums, which I do have. The two first ones, uh, Out of Control, and the, the two Peter Chris ones that were recently reissued on vinyl by Rockologi the Rockologist. So I did pick those up. 
and so and i had those back in the day on vinyl when they came out and everything so but this is the one that you know later came out is very hard to find on vinyl then they reissued it and that became very hard to find and then i found this one which is on purple it's been on purple and it's been on green and they run really expensive and i bought one for not as expensive as it could have been but so i'm really proud to have this one ace did come in and do some guitar work on it so this is a great album and it's probably a little bit on the rockier side versus the first two of his solo albums which were definitely probably leaned heavier towards his original though not quite as rhythm and bluesy type stuff it definitely was more adult contemporary type rock whereas this one is more of a let's get a little harder rocking and so great album here and then he's fairly second sighting I, I mean i've got them all but the reason i pulled this one is because i think all of the other solo albums that i've got by him are reissues this one is an og copy it's a cutout here but you know i've got the reissue of the first album and the reissue of trouble walking and the reissue of the live album and actually the, the live plus one may be an original maybe not and then all the new albums are just, well, they're new albums. But this is one of the originals from back in the day. So I figured I'd grab this one. So there you go. So there it is. That's the KISS tag. That's all 11 questions, I believe. Hopefully I've satisfied them all. Fun stuff. Check it out if you're a KISS fan. You can do this. Jump on board. I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.